We continue now at the top of Daf Yud Tes Amad Aleph from Maseches Baba Kama. This is Baba Kama Daf 19a. And the previous Amad Rava asked, "Is there Ha'ada for Tsroros or not?" There were two ways to understand what exactly the question was. One way to understand the question is, if Tsroros happens with an animal three times, so then do we say that it becomes a muad as far as Tsroros is concerned, and it has to pay Nezek Sholem? Or it could be that the question means, let's say you have Tsroros that happens in an abnormal fashion, but then it happens in an abnormal fashion three times. So then again, the question is, is there a concept of muad when it comes to Tsroros, and it has to pay Nezek Sholem in that situation, which is more along the lines of Tam. In any case, whichever way you understand the question of whether or not there is Hadol Litzroros, the Gemara on the previous summit tried to bring a proof because we have a machlokus when an animal screams and makes noise and that causes something to break. There seems to be a machlokus whether it's Nezek Sholem or Chatzi Nezek. And so at first the Gemara says, isn't the situation over here where it happened three times? Uvahakamiflagin, this is exactly the machlokus. Mar Savar Yesh Hadol. One says that there is Hadol, it becomes a muad, has to pay Nezek Sholem. Umar Savar Ein Hadol, and the other one says there's no concept of Hadol and therefore it continues to pay Chatzi Nezek. And the Gemara says that's not necessarily the machlokus at all. Lo no, Bechad Zimna, really talking about where it happens just one time, the animal screams one time and causes something to break and therefore you have a machlokas again, Nezek Sholem and Chatzin Nezek, it's a normal machlokas by Tzroros, of plugs of the Sumchus, the Rabbonon Kamiflug. It's just the regular machlokas, Sumchus and the Rabbonon. Sumchus says that, that Tzroros is Nezek Sholem, and the Rabbonon say that Tzroros is Chatzin Nezek. But the Gemara asks, Vahamashunahu, but the Gemara asks for a chicken to stick its head inside of a vessel and scream and cause the, the vessel to break. That is certainly Mishuna. That's certainly something that should be considered to be strange. And if it's strange, why would you ever pay the Nezek Sholem? And the Gemara answers to that, the Isbe Barzani. The Gemara answers that there is Bizroni, that there is seeds inside of the vessel. And therefore, since there are seeds inside of the vessel, it's normal for the animal to stick its head inside there. Rashi says, Meshunahu atarnagol shein darko litkoa bekli. It's not normal for a chicken to go inside to stick its head inside a kli and to scream. The shadabe bizroni. So again, that there are seeds there. Sheyesh zeroim bekli. There are seeds inside of, of the kli. The orchei lahachnas rosho besochu. It's normal to put its head in there. Velechol and to eat the seeds. The kevan de orchei lechol orchei nami. Let's look. Once it's already normal to eat, it's also normal to scream. And that could be the situation again within this machlokus. And the Gemara continues, Boy Ravashi, Ravashi asks the following question, Yesh Shinoi Litzroros L'Revia Nezek. Let's say you have Tzroros situation happens, but it happens with a Shinoi. It happens in a different manner than the usual manner. So then do we say maybe you should pay a quarter, according to the understanding that Tzroros is generally Chatzi Nezek. And then we say there's a concept of a Tam, when something happens in a strange fashion. So you have a concept of Chatzi Nezek. So here it should be half of half, and it should be a quarter. O ain Shinoi Litzroros L'Revia Nezek. Or maybe we say there's no concept of Shinoi by Tzroros to pay a quarter. Rashi says, This is a question according to the Rabbanon who argue on Sumchis. It's a question according to the Rabbanon who say that generally, they say that generally a normal Tzoros is Chatzin Nezek. So, let's say the Tzoros happened in an abnormal fashion, like it kicked. Because of the kicking, the pebbles go flying, maybe that's considered considered a Shinoi, and now becomes a Tam in terms of these Tzoros, and you pay a quarter. Because in a regular situation, you're going to pay Chatzin Ezek. So therefore, maybe as a Tam, it's going to be a quarter. Oh, ain't Shinoi. Maybe there is no concept of Shinoi L'Shalim Revia. You're not going to pay a Revia. The Liolam Chatzin Ezek. It's always going to be Chatzin Ezek. Shein Tam was Vadobahem. There's no concept of Tam and Muad over there. The Loesh Gachon Tam, the Mishalim Basar Mipag. We don't find Tam ever paying less than half. And the Gemara continues. Tif Shud Lay Midorav. We can try to answer this question from what Rava, from Rava's question. The boy Rava, because Rava had asked, the Yesh Hadol Litzroros, so ain't Hadol Litzroros. He said, is there a concept of Muad by Tzroros, or is there no concept of Muad by Tzroros? Mechlal de ain Shinoi. That would imply that there's no concept of Shinoi by Tzroros. Rashi says, Mechlal de ain Shinoi de Iyesh Shinoi Lurevia. Because if there was a concept of Shinoi where you paid a quarter, have a Nezek Ladosan. So then it would be Chatzin Nezek when it's a Muad. So what's Rava's question even? Vaday ain Hadol Shalim Nezek Shalim. There's certainly no concept of Hado to pay a full amount. Da Tamus Revia Nezek Vado Chatzin Nezek. Because a Tam pays a quarter and a Muad pays Chatzin Nezek. The implication of Rava's question is that you pay Chatzin Nezek and that. Maybe there's a possibility of paying Nezek Sholem, but there's certainly no possibility of paying a quarter. And so therefore, it would seem to be, we have an answer to this question that there's no concept of a quarter when it comes to Tzoros from the fact that Rav even asked this question. Again, Mechlal, Dein Shinoi, it sounds like there's no concept of Shinoi to pay a quarter. 
And the Gemara says, Dilma Rava, maybe Rava was asking in an Imtim Salomar Kamar. He was asking in an Imtim Salomar fashion, meaning if you say the answer to the following question, then I have the following question. Imtim Salomar ain't Shinoi. If you're going to say there's no concept of Shinoi, meaning there's no concept of a Ravia of a quarter, so now I have a question about Nezek Sholem. Yesh Hado, Owen Hado, is there a concept of Hado or not? And the Gemara says to that, take it. The Gemara leaves that as a question. And the Gemara continues, Boy Ravashi, Ravashi asks the following question. Koach Kocho Lesumchas Kekocho Dami. Let's say of a situation where something gets damaged not by the force of the animal, but by the force of the force of the animal. So the animal makes, the animal causes the Tzrorot to hit something else and then cause damage. Koach Kocho. So do you say that Koach Kocho Lesumchas is Kekocho Dami? It's the same thing as force, and meaning in all cases you're going to pay Nezek Shalim. Oh, lower, maybe not. Maybe Koach Kocho to Sumchas would actually be Chatzin Nezek. It would it'd be like a normal case of Tzoros to the Rabbonim. Migomer halacho muki lo bekoach kocho. Does he learn the halach of Chatzin Nezek Tzoros and he applies it to koach kocho? O dilma lo gomer halacha klal, or maybe he doesn't learn that halach at all. There is no concept of Chatzin Nezek Tzoros according to Sumchas. And the Gemara says to that teku, the Gemara leaves it as a question. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, if the animal is kicking, or it's a situation of Tzoros, the pebbles are flying from, from underneath its feet, and it breaks the Kalem, so then the payment is Chatzin Nezek. Now we understand the case of Tzoros is Chatzin Nezek. What's going on in the situation of Mivaetis? Is that just a normal situation of directly kicking with no Tzoros, and then maybe you're paying Chatzin Nezek because it's a Shinoi, or is that a case that's involved with Tzoros? The Gemara says he boil who they had the following question. Hey Khikamra, what exactly does the Mishnah mean? Does it mean to say that it's kicking and does direct damage with the kicking? Oh, or a regular case of Tzoros. Both of these cases will pay Chatzin Ezek. If you understand the mission in this fashion, the whole mission is the Rabbonin, that Tzoros is Chatzin Ezek. Or maybe, maybe what it means is it's kicking and it damages with the kicking. Or if the pebbles fly because of the strange kicking, then it pays meaning you're paying Chatzin Ezek in all those situations because it's done with a Shinoi. But if it would be Tzoros in the normal fashion, it would be Nezek Shalim. And according to that understanding, who's the author of the Mishnah, the author would be Sumchus that Tzoros is Nezek Shalim. And the Gemara continues, Tashma Misefa, we can bring a proof to this from the end of the Mishnah, because the end of the Mishnah says, Darsa ala Shibarto. let's say the animal steps on a Kli and it breaks it. Venafal Hashever al Kli Acher, and then that broken Kli goes and hits another Kli. Veshivron, it breaks that second Kli. Alarishon Meshalem Nezek Shalim, on the first Kli, on the first vessel, you pay Nezek Shalim the full amount. Vealo Achron Chatzin Nezek, and then on the last one, on the second on the second Kli, you pay Chatzin Nezek. The idea is that the first one was broken directly, and the second one is Tzoros, and so it certainly seems that the mission is following the Rabbon, and that Tzoros is Chatzin Nezek. Vi Sumchis, if you're going to say the mission is Sumchis, Mi Islei Chatzin Nezek, does he even have a concept of Chatzin Nezek? He doesn't have such a concept. It seems to be a proof that the mission is following the Rabbon. But the Gemara then says, Vechitema, but maybe you will say, maybe you'll suggest, Rishon, Rishon Lahataza, that actually the first Kli is not the one that was directly hit by the animal, but that was the one that was hit by something that the animal hit. That was the classic Tzoros. Vesheni, Sheni Lahataza, and then the second one was like a Koach Kocho. Something was hit, let's say, by pebbles, hit a Kli, and then Kli hit something else. So that, Vesheni Leila Sumchis, Ben Kocho, Le Koach Kocho. And maybe you'll suggest the Mishnah is Sumchis. And Sumchis is making a distinction between Kocho, where you pay Nezek Sholem, and Koach Kocho, where you pay Chatzin Nezek, but that would really answer our earlier question if that were the case. Ravashi, but then you go back to the question that Ravashi asked before. Koach Kocho the Sumchis Kekocho Dami Olav Kekocho Dami. Whether Koach Kocho according to Sumchis is the same as Kocho or not the same as Kocho. Tifsho Le the Lav Kekocho Dami. If you're going to say the Mishnah Sumchis, you're automatically answering that according to Sumchis Koach Kocho is not the same as Kocho. And the Gemara says to that, Ravashi, you're going to say as follows. Ravashi, who had the, that question within Sumchis, so Ravashi, Rabbonan Muki, La Ravashi will say that the Mishnah is like the Rabbonan, Uboi Lahachi, and he asks as follows, Haisa Mivaetes, Behizika Beviuta, Otsroros, Kerchayu, Chatzinezek. Again, if it's kicking and it damages with the kicking or regular Tsroros, it's Chatzinezek. Hamach Mazbiot, Revia Nezek, Vieshinoi. And the question would be as follows. But let's say because of the kicking, that would cause the Tsroros. So now you're doing Tsroros with a Shinoi 
Shinoi, maybe then it would be a Revia Nezik, maybe then it would be a quarter. He asks that as a question. Maybe the way you read the Mishnah is it's kicking and it damages directly with the kicking. And maybe if it's Soros also because of the kicking, it's Chatsi Nezik Vein Shinoi, and there is no concept of Shinoi to take it down to a Revia. And on that question, take with that question, we would leave as a question. And Rashi explains Ravashi Karabon and Mukila Ravashi will say that the Mishnah follows the Rabbon, and that way he cannot answer his question within Sumchis. Vahach boy, de boy, Ravashi Leil, and that earlier question that Ravashi asked earlier about Revia, about a quarter. Ye Shino le Tzoros so ain't Shino, that is there a concept of Shino by Tzoros or not to a Revia? Ahomas Nisan boy, he was actually asking on this very Mishnah. Vahachi kaboy, haisam avetas vachulu, and this was the way to frame the question. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. Boy, mine, Rabbi Abba bar memel me, Rabbi Ami. Rabbi Abba bar memel asked Rabbi Ami the following question. Vi Amri lo me, Rabbi Chia bar Abba. Some say he asked the question from Rabbi Chia bar Abba. Haisa mahalechis, if the animal is walking, b'mokum shi efshel on an area where it really has no choice where to go. El imkain minat says this, the only way that it's going to walk, it's going to end up that the pebbles will fly out from under its feet. Uvata vihitiza vihizika. But then the animal kicks and causes the pebbles to fly and cause damage. So ma, what would be the, what would be the, Halach in that situation, so in this situation it's really impossible anyway. Those pebbles are going to fly either way, so that would be considered orche. That would be like normal tsroros. maybe but maybe now we say no. It's happening because it's kicking, and it's actually an abnormal form of tsroros. And the Gemara says, take with the Gemara leaves that as a question. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. Boy, mine Rabbi Yirmiyah, me Rabbi Zeir. Rabbi Yirmiyah asks Rabbi Zeir the following question: Haisa mahaleches v'itiza v'hizika. Let's say the animal is walking. Haisa mahaleches b'rishas aravim. Rather, let's say the animal is walking b'rishas aravim v'hitiza v'hizika, and it causes the pebbles to fly and they cause damage. Mahu, what's the halacha? Like Karen midamin on levechayev. Is this considered to be like Karen? And Karen is chayev in b'rishas aravim. Odil matolda the regal. Or maybe this should be considered a tolda of regal. It's troros, which is a tolda of regal. Upetura, and we know that regal is. Potter in Rishos Aravim. Amar Le, so he said back to him, this is Rebbe Zeira, responding to Rebbe Yirmiya, Mestavra told the Regal who it makes sense to say that it's a told of Regal, and so therefore it's Potter in Rishos Aravim. And then he continued the question, he teased Rishos Saravim, he zika Rishos Ayachid, but what happens if it kicks out the pebbles in Rishos Aravim, but they actually do the damage in Rishos Ayachid? So there the damage is happening in Rishos Ayachid, maybe it should be Chayev, Mahu, what's the Allah in that case? Amar Le, so he said back to him in terms of that, Akira, Ein Khan, Hanochi, Yesh if there's no Akira, Kira, meaning if that's happening in Rosh Ram where, where you're potter, so you think just because it landed the Hanukkah, therefore that we should have a Hanukkah, and you should be Chayev, meaning to say, you're potter in that case as well. If you don't have an Akira in the proper area, if the Akira is in Rosh Ravim, so it's going to be potter because it's a told of Regal. And the Gemara continues, Eisvei, we have the following question on this. Haisa mahalechas bederech v'itiza, it says, let's say she, the animal, she's walking on the road, and she kicks up the pebbles, bein b'rishos ha'yachid, bein b'rishos ha'ravim, whether in b'rishos ha'yachid or in b'rishos ha'ravim, chayiv, it's going to be chayiv. So what does that mean, b'rishos ha'ravim, chayiv? My love is it not. Hitiza b'rishos ha'ravim, hizika b'rishos ha'ravim. Doesn't it mean to say that it kicks up the pebbles in b'rishos ha'ravim and damages in b'rishos ha'ravim? And on our very first question, we have the opposite answer, that we have tzoros in b'rishos ha'ravim, it seems to be chayiv. And the Gemara says to that, "Lo, no, you don't have to say it's that." He teases Brishas Aravim, Beizika Brishas Ayachin. Maybe it's really the second question. The cases where it kicked up the pebbles in Brishas Aravim, but then they did damage in Brishas Ayachin, and in that case, we're saying Chayef. But the Gemara says one second. But we said Potter in that case also. But didn't you say that if there's no Akira, can there possibly be Hanacha? You said Potter in that case as well. But here it seems to be at least in that case Chayev Amar Le. So he said back to him, Hadri B. I have retracted from that position. And really, if it's Berushas Harabim and then does damage in Berushas Hayachid, it's actually going to be Chayev. And the Gemara continues along the same lines. Eisvei, we have the following question: Darsa al Shibarto. Let's say the animal steps on a vessel and breaks it. Venafal Hashever al and then the broken piece goes and hits another kli and breaks that. On the first vessel, you pay Nezek Sholem. And on the second vessel, you pay half the damage. Now we learned on the Mishnah, we learned the Bryce as follows. All of this is true in the Rishos Hanizik. But if this happens in Rishos Aravim, so on the first one, Potter, because that's Regel in Rishos Aravim. But on the later vessel, it's going to 
to be Chayef. So again, what's this later vessel that you're Chayef? Is it happening in Rishas Aravim? Is it happening in Rishas Ayachid? The Gemara first says again, My love, he teaser Rishas Aravim, the Hizika Rishas Aravim. Doesn't it mean that the pebbles go flying in Rishas Aravim and they cause the damage in Rishas Aravim? We see that Tsroros is Chayef in Rishas Aravim. And the Gemara again says, Lo, no, he teaser Rishas Aravim, the Hizika Rishas Ayachid. It really means that the pebbles go flying in Rishas Aravim, but they cause damage in Rishas Ayachid. But again, that seems to answer the second question. Didn't you say that if there's no Akira, can there possibly be a Hanochi You said Potter in that case as well. Here it seems to be Chayev. Amarle, again, he said to him, Hadri B, I have retracted that position, and really you're Chayev in that case. And the Gemara continues, Ini, is this really the case? And we will continue with, with this discussion in the next video on Daf Yotes Amid Beis.